This session deals with measurement or measurements. Um, it is one of the several sessions um, that we have in the unit on basic laboratory math. And so measurement is what it is basically measures of basically counting something, determining how much uh, of something you have, or say even what temperature it is. Um, um, and so that each characteristic, be it weight or volume, will have some unit, right? And um, you have familiar familiarity with that. Um, if I ask you to bring me a pound of flour, then you'd have a notion uh, of what that meant. Or if I said, oh, let's go a gallon of lemonade, um, we know what that meant. So in terms of the flour, you know, the unit um, that I used was the pound, right, or pound. It, whereas with the lemonade, I said we had a gallon, right? So in fact, those were our units. You know, a unit is a unit. Is a precisely defined amount of some property. All right. So we have an idea of what the definition of what define what a pound of flour looks like or what a gallon of lemonade looks like. Right. And a group of units taken together as in pound and gallon and foot or inch or whatnot, those that are units are together comprise a measurement system. Right here I say a measurement system is a group of units. Right. And the measurement system that we're probably most familiar with in our everyday life is what we call the USCS system, or the United States. Customary system. And that's actually a pretty good name for it. Right? It's our United States. Um, so a, a number of the measures within the United States customary system, the United States is the only place that would have that same measure. Right? And it's customary because it's what, across time, um, folks in this country have agreed upon, right, as to what uh, a pound was and what a gallon was, right, what uh, each unit represents. Now, one problem in the laboratory with the United States customary system that makes it cu uh, cumbersome in the laboratory is that it's not systematic. Right? Um, and um, for instance, in measurement we have table spoons and teaspoons and um, ounces and cups and, and there's no consistent you know, uh, way. You know, we have um, two pints and a quart, four quarts in a gallon, even if there's 126 quarts in a barrel. Right? So a barrel is a unit in the United States customary system. 
Um, and we're used to those. We're used to working with them. But in the laboratory, um, this lack of systematic uh, relationship is problematic. So in the lab, right, um, right, in the lab, right, we're going to use the metric. And I know for some people, if you're born and raised and comfortable with the United States customary system, it's uh, a bit of a um, process um, to come to grips with the metric system um, and use it. But it is the, basically the language of the lab, and um, you're going to have to embrace it. It's a bit like learning to tie your shoes. If you don't learn to tie your shoes, you can probably still walk around but you're going to wind up stumbling a good bit. Um, uh, it's also a bit analogous to kind of learning a foreign language. You know, um, once you become fluent in it, then you you don't worry about trans translating. Right? Once you learn, if you go to France, people are speaking French. You're not going to worry about translating it back into English or. Worry, you know, you're going to understand what they're saying. You're going to understand the signs, the menus in the restaurant, that kind of, so, you know, so once you're fluent in it, then that's what you're, and so, um, uh, so that's the point. We're going to have to uh, uh, learn the metric system and become fluent in it, if you will. Now, initially, you know, to kind of learn relatively what the, units are in the metric system, we're going to do some comparison with the U.S. customary system, and we're going to learn um, to do conversions, and we're going to do some mathematical conversions so that you learn how to do that. Um, there are actually conversion applications for your smartphones um, that will um, convert it, but the point is um, there's, you know, I won't say it's zero, but it's almost zero use in the, in the laboratory once you learn the metric system. Everything's operating in the metric system. Your instructions are given in metric. Your instruments are measuring in metric. Your balances are weighing in grams. Your water baths are in degrees centigrade. Um, and your rulers are in millimeters and centimeters. So your instruments are working in metric. Your instructions are working in metric, and once your brain works in metric, then you're set to go. Now, just as the United States customary system had its um, terminology, or USTS, the metric system falls under a measurement system. The measurement system that the metrics fall under is called SI right, for um, Systeme International de Unique. Right. You can tell I don't normally speak French, but we just call it the SI system. And so for just the international system of units, so we'll put that in English. In that system, there are units of measurement for a lot of things. Le length, mass, time, temperature, um, and electrical current, a, a, you know, um, a number of different things. The units that we're going to be in this session, we're going to be worried about are length, weight or mass and volume, All right? And we said that, you know, one of the key beauties, if you will, of the SI system or the metric system is that there it's, as I said, it's systematic. It works in a systematic way, so you don't have to always start thinking, well, are there two 
teaspoons and a tablespoon or are there three and what's a half a teaspoon, that type of thing. There's a basic unit for each of these measures. For the length, the basic unit is going to be the meter. Right? For the weight, the basic unit is going to be the gram. And for the volume, the basic unit is going to be the liter. Then once we have that basic unit, then we're going to add either prefixes or suffixes right, to that basic unit to modify it, to quantify it um, within different amounts that we want to work with. So, so, let's look at this table that has metric prefixes in everyday use and how the prefix is used with the standard unit to modify it. And, and let's use... Um, example we we'll work on volume. So what do we say our standard unit was the liter. Right? So liter. Sorry about that. So so let's say we took this So, working with our table here on the metric prefixes and using the volume here, we said that the volume, the standard unit, being the liter, right? So, if that's the standard unit, and we bring in here the standard unit is here where it says none, so that there's no prefix or suffix, so it would just be the standard unit. So, we had one liter, right? That would be it. Now let's talk about then, let's say one kiloliter. Right. So here we have kilo as our prefix. Prefix before liter. Right. means 1,000. So for one kilo is 1,000 liters. Okay. If we go to the next one, mega, right, which is what? One million. So one megaliter would be one million liters or let's put that in scientific notation or exponential form. Right? That would be ten to the six liters. Right? So we've got kilo, mega, giga, tera. So you're probably familiar with these terms if you're doing computers. This is how much uh, you know uh, storage space my computer has, so this is how, you know, large a disk is my um, 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 flash drive has so many gigabytes, and that unit of measurement in the computer storage is bytes, ha you know, uh, how many terabyte hard drives do I have? So, you know, the um, um, technology, the computer technology tends to be working up here in this range of Giga and Terra. In the laboratory, right, um, we'll have kilograms and, um, you know, kiloliters and whatnot, but most of our folks are going to be more down in the kind of the lower end of this. So let's look here at this one, milli, right, 
and if we put it in front of leader, right, and here we say it's 0 0.001, so that would be 0 0.001 liter for 10 to the minus 3 liters. Microliter. Right, micro would be 10 to the minus 6 liters. Right. So if we're working down, let's work, go down one. Let's do nano since it's on here. It's 10 to the minus 9 liters. So notice what we've picked here on this table, particularly on what we've done, milli, micro, and nano, right, we've done three-fold, or three-ten-fold, one-thousand-fold, is what I'm talking one-thousand-fold differences. So we have a liter, one-thousandth of a liter is a milliliter, one-thousandth of a milliliter is a microliter, and a thousandth of a microliter is a nano. Liter. Now, they all refer back here relative to the basic unit of a liter, right? So we have these 10 to the minus 3, minus 6, minus 9. But the ones that we've picked, selected here are all 1,000 fold less than the previous ones. So, right, so we, in terms of, um, um, so, yeah, so, and these prefixes, I selected liter, but we could do the same thing with gram as our unit. So that we could have a milligram, a microgram, a nanogram. And we could do the same thing with the units of measure, meter, millimeter, micrometer, nanometer. So, it's very functional, very systematic. You have your basic unit of measurement, be it gram, liter, or meter, and then you have the appropriate prefix, right, um, um, to um, um, add to um, the um, unit to define your value. 